Welcome back. We continue on from previous video on the subject of work, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Uh, the remaining two topics is potential energy and the conservation of mechanical energy. So um, from the previous video, we said that there are several ways of calculating work. The uh, If the force is constant, then the work is equal to simply F times D, where D here is the distance or the displacement, and F is the force, provided that the force and the displacement are either parallel or anti-parallel, opposite in direction, or they have the same direction. If they're opposite in direction, the work becomes negative, because one of them will be minus sign, will have a minus sign. Um, now, if the force is not a constant, say it's a function of position, say F of X, then in this case the work is equal to the area under the curve or f of x dx okay and of course we have a, a finite integral from x1 to x2 okay and i think we talked about that uh, also the work could be a uh, 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 modeled as a vector and then the displacement is also as a vector, say, delta r. And in this case, the work would be the dot product or the scalar product of f times delta r. And I think we did at least two problems in relation to that. Um, we also said that the um, we can also get the work from what we call the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem says that the work is also equal to the difference in kinetic energy. And I think we have done at least two problems in, the, in regarding to that. And the last thing is that the work energy theorem also includes that the work is equal to the difference in potential energy. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, here's, here's just an example for you. Suppose that, um, let's say... Um, I have a book. Here it is. Say the book is sitting on the table. And here is the book. And let's suppose that uh, there is a shelf above the table right here, right in this location here. And the book is here on the table or maybe on the floor, whatever. So what I want to do, I want to take the book and put it on the shelf here. All right. So I'm going to take the book and place it right on the shelf here. So in order for me, oh, so, okay, suppose that the shelf is a distance, is at the height of, say, uh, y from the original position of the book, or let's say from the table, okay? Uh, so when I lift the book, I need to lift it with a force that is equal to the weight of the book. This makes sense? So we know that the work, we just said the work is equal to FD, where D here is the displacement. For our case, the displacement here is the Y, it's in the vertical direction. And the force is, uh, we said it's a constant. Well, the weight of the book is constant. So we can say that the work is equal to the weight of the book. Let me just write it. So F, uh, Y. So in this case, the F here is basically the weight of the book, MG times Y. So we come up with a value for the work, and that's equal to MGY. This we define as the gravitational potential energy. potential energy okay and we give it a special symbol we don't call it work really we call it potential energy u at least for in our uh, in our book so we say that the potential energy pe if you will which is basically the symbol u for potential energy is equal to mgh that's the most common symbol for it where the height is uh, replaces the y here. Okay, um, let me give you an example and show you how that what, what the meaning of all of that. Um, well, before I give you the example, so let me let me back up a little bit and said okay. So we said that 
the the work energy theorem says w equal delta ke so we said the work is equal to delta ke we can also say that the work is also equal to delta pe the difference in the potential energy okay uh, now when we bring those together and let's say because they are equal to each other we actually put a minus sign here and say that the work is equal to delta ke the difference in kinetic energy is also equal to delta uh, you know I can call it u uh, pe or delta u now why the minus sign the meaning of the minus sign here meaning the meaning is that an increase in the kinetic energy uh, implies a decrease in the uh, in the potential energy okay and vice versa let me let me explain that what what that means before i dig deeper into it um, suppose that I have a height, say, let's say there is a height here and I'm holding a stone. This is the height H, for example, or we'll call it Y, whatever you want to call it. And and I'm holding the stone, say, between my fingers, and I let go, and then the stone falls, and then it hit the ground, right? Now, right before it hit the ground, I am interested in finding the velocity of the stone just before it hit the ground. So I have a stone um, at height y. Uh, what is, let's say, uh, sorry, sorry, let's say I dropped it, so it's been dropped. Uh, I need to know the velocity just before it hit the ground. Okay. Well, I don't need any fancy energy equation or potential energy or any of that. All I need is kinematics. You know what I mean? We have done kinematics before. If you remember, let me, um, well, let, let, let's look at this, the, the second kinematic. I hope you memorize them by now. It says V squared equals V naught squared uh, minus 2GY. Remember that? This is the second one. Where uh, V naught is the initial velocity of the stone here. V here is the final velocity just before it hit the ground, and Y is basically the uh, the height here. You see what I'm saying? So uh, with this in mind, so I know that V naught is zero because I'm holding the stone between my fingers. So therefore, V squared is equal to minus two G Y. And if you remember, the Y is always negative. So this negative Y with this negative is going to be positive. So let me just eliminate it. So we end up with V equal to square root of 2gy and there we go i have i can calculate the velocity of the stone just before it hit the ground let's say that the height here is 10 meters g is 9.8 so 2 times 9.8 times 10 under the square root i will calculate for you exactly what is the speed of the stone just before it hit the ground using kinematics i don't need any of that fancy stuff that i have just showed you you see what i'm saying but Yes, I don't need it for this for this problem because it is very very simple. But how do I use the concept of work to solve this problem? This is the question. Okay, so I'm gonna and hopefully we want to come up with the same answer, which is v equals square root of t g y. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to this equation here. This is an extremely important equation. It says work is equal to delta k e and delta u. Let me write them down again here. So, back to delta K equals negative delta U. What that means is the following. 
Delta K here is the difference in kinetic energy, which basically one half m v two squared minus one half m v one squared equals to. Now, what is u? We said that u is equal to what mgh right here. Uh, what is it? Did I miss it? Right there, mgy right there. Okay. So we can say that it is a minus the uh, u final, which is m g y sub 2 minus m g y sub 1. Okay. Now put in the minus sign, insert this minus sign in there. I will end up with uh, something like uh, m g y 1 minus m g y 2. Okay. Uh, and now what I want to do, I want to move one half m uh, m v one squared to this side, and then the m g y two to the other side. So what I'm going to get is this: one half m v two squared plus m g y two. Whoops, I want to do it in the other line. I'm sorry. Eliminate that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to go to the next line here. So I have here one half m v two squared plus m g y two equals to uh, one half m v one squared plus m g y one i hope this makes sense to you so we come up with something like that now look at this it says that the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy in the second stage or whatever two is equal to the, the same sum of kinetic and potential, okay? What that means is that energy is, the total energy or the total sum here is constant. It does not change, whether it is uh, on the shelf or on the ground or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So we define this to be the total energy. So we define the total energy, capital E, to be equal to one half m v squared plus m g y. Let me elaborate a little bit on that. Maybe this is sound. This sounds vague for you. Um, suppose I have, let's say I have thirty five cents. Okay, this is just an example. I just want to explain to you what what I mean by that. This is called the total energy, and it's conserved. So let me let me explain it with a simple example. Suppose I have thirty five cents. Okay. And let's say you and me. So here is me. Here is you. All right. This is a kind of a silly example, but I think you will understand the concept of conservation of energy and total energy with this example. So pay attention. All right. I have in my hand 35 cents, right? You have, let's say, zero. You have no money at all okay so what is the sum between both of us well it's 35 correct okay suppose I give you five cents now you have five now I have 30 what's the sum between us 35 suppose I give you 10 now I have what uh, 25 what's the sum 35 you, you know what I'm going with this. In other words, I, we can swap pennies between us all day, but the sum will always be the same. Okay? This is called conservation. The conservation of pennies, if, or whatever you want to call that. But that's the key word. That's the meaning of the word conservation is that I have 35 cents in my pocket. I can give you any amount I want, but the sum between, so we will have different amounts. You and I will always have different amounts, maybe, okay? But the sum between us will always be, say, 35 cents, okay? The same thing exactly is happening for the total energy here. Look at that. Here, what we have, let me, let me write it down in different symbols. So what we have in here, whoops, good idea. What I have in here is that big E is equal kinetic plus potential. Suppose the total energy E is, say, 1,000 joules, for example. Okay? 
Well, what is the kinetic? Well, some number. Say if the kinetic is 500 joule, then the potential is for sure 500. Why? Because the sum must always be equal to 1000. Okay? That's basically what this says. Um, the sum of the kinetic and the potential initially, you know, one, whatever that stage one is, is equal to the sum of the kinetic plus potential at some other stage two. Okay? I mean, it's possible that one half mv1 is not equal, uh, squared is not equal to necessarily to one half mv2 squared, but the sum is always equal. You got that? That's the essence of the total energy or the conservation of mechanical energy. You got that? Very important concept. This is the concept that you need to learn, and this is probably the most important concept in the video, this video and the previous one. So I hope you understand that. So now what I want to do, I want to use this concept, okay, to solve this simple problem, the stone problem here, okay? Now before I go any further, let me just elaborate a little bit. So we said that the kinetic energy is what is a motion energy. If the, if the object is moving, it has kinetic energy. How much? One half mv squared. Take the v, square it, multiply by the mass, times half, you get the kinetic. The potential, however, is all about uh, displacement. For the case of gravitation, if it has height, it has potential. If it doesn't have height, it doesn't have potential. Later on, we'll learn if there is a stretch in the spring, there is potential, stretch or compression. If there is no stretch or compression, we don't have potential, okay? So if potential is all about displacement, whether it is gravitational, uh, uh, potential energy where you have here height, or say a, a, a spring where you have compression or, or stretch. So I want to use this concept of total energy to calculate or to, excuse me, to solve this problem. So let's go back to this problem. So what this problem says, we have a height, I have a stone, I'm holding it between my fingers, I let go, the stone falls and hits the ground. I want to know what is the speed of the stone just before it hit the ground, not using kinematics, I use free fall kinematics here, right? I'm going to use the concept of total energy, E equals K plus U, okay? Keep this simple example, the 35 cent example in mind. So let's do that. Here is how we do it. Let me draw it again. So here's the height, here's the stone, here's the Y height, right? And I'm holding it between my fingers and I wanna know the speed of the stone here. Remember, when we use free fall kinematics, we came up with this uh, neat little equation. Uh, what is it? Uh, there it is, square root of two GH. Okay, write it down. V equals square root of two GH. So let's see if we can get the same answer. So how do we do this problem? Well, look, so we started here, right? We started right here and then we here. And it's, think of this position and this position like uh, one and two, you know, here, uh, you know, you have one and two, two stages, the so same thing. So let's say this is, uh, this one is stage one, this is stage two, okay? So I asked the question, while I'm holding the stone between my fingers, and of course, E equals K plus U. Do we have K? The answer is no, because the stone is not moving. I'm holding it between my fingers. So that's zero. But we have U because there is a height Y. And what is U? MGY. So we have MGY here. So we have zero plus MGY. Oops, MGY we said. Okay. Now, right here, right before it hit the ground, Again, E is equal to K plus U. Um, do we have height here? Well, it's infinitesimal height. We said just before it hit the ground, so the height must be really tiny. So tiny, we can just basically ignore it. You know what I mean? We can just ignore it. So for all practical purposes, this Y really is just zero. Okay. but we still have kinetic energy one half mv squared. Okay, so far? Now, how this E and this E are related, remember this is position one, I'm gonna call it one with a circle around it. 
This is position two. How the two E's are related? Well, the total energy, and according to the conservation law, is conserved, or like that. What is it? Uh, this one right here. So we can say that by conservation law, by the law of conservation, must E1 equals E2. That's the law of nature. So let me equate them. So E1 equals E2, which means E1, which is MGY, must equal to what? E2, which is 1 half MV squared. <clears throat> Masses cancel out. I'm going to solve for V, and I get the square root of 2GY, which is exactly the solution we got right here, square root of 2GY. See how neat it is? Now, you may say kinematics is much easier. Uh, that's, that's, that's true. I agree with you. But again, it's easier because we are using a very simple example. Uh, you will be seeing some, uh, some more complicated example where kinematics is uh, actually not terribly the best solution to such problems. So let's work out some problems. Here's a problem for you. This is problem number 11, chapter 10. Let me go there. Let me get the book. Uh, problem number 11 is right here. Uh, this is the, 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 the picture that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, let's uh, look at it. So what you have, you have a car, uh, you have a height. The car is on top of this height, uh, hill maybe, 10 meters. And then I believe the car runs out of gas. So the car uh, rolls down the hill and then it goes up this hill. And the hill here is 15 meters, and this is the gas station, and I forgot what the question was. But anyway, there it is. There is a picture. So let's read it together. It says a 1,500-kilogram car traveling at 10 meters per second suddenly runs out of gas while approaching the valley shown in the figure. This is the valley right here. Uh, the alert driver immediately puts the car in neutral so that it will roll. What will be the car's speed as it coasts into the gas station right here on the other side of the valley right there? So basically the car is going to be right here and we are asking the question what would be the, uh, the speed of a car here, okay? All right, so how do we do it? Again, we want to use um, conservation of energy to do that. So let's go for it. Whoop, 11, like that. Okay, so let me draw it. So we have something like this is the first height, and then the valley, and then the height of this one is higher. Uh, and so here is the uh, gas station somewhere here. Here's our car right here. And the, uh, the height here is 10 meters. And this is the valley. And we want to know the speed of the car here. We're going to call that V. I'm going to call this V naught. Okay. And I'm going to call this position, position A, the, the valley, position B. And right here, position C, I forgot to say that this is 15 meters. Here's the ground. Just like that, okay? All right, uh, the data that we have is the mass of the car is 1,500 kilogram. And the initial velocity of the car is 10 meters per second. And that's it. Okay, so how do we do this problem? Well, um, we can use the conservation of energy. Uh, remember, the, the energy here at position A, position B, and position C are all equal because energy is conserved. So since we are 
interested in finding the velocity here in position C. So we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna create uh, we wanna uh, say that the total energy in A is equal to the total energy in C. So I'm gonna write it like this: the total energy at A must be equal to the total energy at C. See what I'm saying? So what's the total energy in general? Please remember it, K plus U. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> so that's going to be one half MV naught squared plus MG. Let me call that, let me call that uh, Y sub A. And this one is, uh, let's call it Y sub C. How about that? So MG Y sub A equals to the E, the e sub C right here. That's going to be uh, one half m v squared plus m g y sub c, and the uh, cool thing about that, the masses cancel out, so I really don't need the mass of the car. He gives it to me, but I don't need it. And uh, and what else? Um, I am given again. You want to solve for the v right here, so that's the one we're going to solve for. So again, you want to do the algebra before you plug in numbers, okay? So I have here one half V naught squared plus G Y sub A equals half V squared plus G Y sub C. Uh, let's see, get rid of those, the, the half, so multiply both sides by two. So I'm gonna get V naught squared plus two G Y sub A equals v squared plus 2gy sub c uh remember i'm solving for the v uh for the v squared with this one so i'm going to move everything to the other side so in this case v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2gy sub a minus y sub c and uh uh did i do that right uh you're going to get the minus sign here okay okay so it's going to be subtract okay so in this case give v equal to square root of v naught squared plus 2g y sub a minus y sub c and then now now we plug in the numbers after we have an expression Remember, always come up with the expression, the symbolic expression before you plug in numbers, okay? You're not in high school anymore. As an engineer, uh, you wanna, uh, your solution should look professional. Get used to it because later on in life, this is how you're going to be writing your report or whatever. So you want to put in the symbolic equation before you plug in numbers. This is very important. So we have V equals square root of V naught squared is 10 squared plus 2 times 9.8 and y sub a is uh, 10 minus 15 and then we just calculate that and when we calculate it I have um, uh, 1.41 I think meters per second I have it in my notes here uh, please check my work anyway there we go so I have what is the velocity of a car just before, excuse me, as it uh, approaches the gas station is 1.41, okay, which is about uh, three miles an hour, okay, that's really slow, but he made it, the driver made it, okay, good, uh, one more problem. Um, Here's one. Here's a problem from my notes. <clears throat> That's a good problem. I think I reached the edge. Let me just move it a little bit to the side. Okay. Um, so what you have in here, uh, you have something like a track. This is a vertical, and then sorry, let me let me draw it again. It's something like that. Okay, uh, this is think of it like a cliff, 
and then you have an object that uh, slides, let's say, an object here of mass m that slide. So we have a, a, an object, uh, let's say, um, um, a brick or a stone slides um, starting from rest. Uh, on frictionless track and then leaves the track uh, horizontally. The question is, at what height above ground did it start okay what that means so you have this object you have this object and it slides down and then as it comes right at this edge here it is so it slides down as it comes to this edge, it shoots like a projectile and it hits the ground here. Okay. And this distance, the range of the projectile here is one meter. Okay. And the height of this edge right here to the ground is 1.25 meters. The question is, how high is the above the ground is the is the the whole horizontal track this one i'm going to call that h got it okay so how do we do this problem again i want to use conservation of energy uh and the way we do it well we look at uh this okay what i'm interested in really i mean since this portion right here is projectile motion so i can use projectile motion kinematics to get whatever i want out of it okay uh but what i want to do is i want to find the velocity here okay so what i want to first thing i need to do is is to use projectiles to find v so use projectile motion to find v i'm talking this v right here okay so we've done that in the past uh, if you remember we divide the problem into horizontal motion and vertical motion the horizontal motion is x equals v t the V here is basically this one, and it is horizontally, that's what the problem says. And the vertical motion, which is basically this part right here, and that's equal to Y equals V. Uh, remember, this is VX here, and this is VYT minus one half GT squared. Now, since it says in the problem that leaves the track horizontally, so that means there is no Y component, so this part right here is zero okay so i'm left with y and this y right here is basically this one remember it's the height of from which the projectile was thrown so that's going to be negative 1.25 equals to now we have here negative 1 uh, 4.9 t squared and from that i can find the t so that's what basically 1.25 divided by 4.9 under the square root and this will give me the time let me what calculate can you please calculate that with me so i have here 1.25 divided by 4.9 and that's square of that that will give me 0 0.06 uh if i did it correctly uh yeah so that would be the time is 0 0.06 second that's really short time. Um, 
0 0.06 seconds. Unless it is, uh, okay. All right. Uh, and then we have, once I know the time, I can easily go back here and know the velocity v sub x. So in this case, v sub x is x over t. So x here is given to us right here. It's one meter right there. So that's going to be 1 over 0 0.06. So basically the reciprocal of that. And that's 15.4 roughly. So the velocity is 15. 0.4 meter per second. There we go. So let's let's uh, recap. So what's happening here? You have the stone or whatever the brick. Let me call it brick maybe. Anyway, so we have the stone here. It's sliding down from an unknown height. By the time it reaches here, we calculated that this v right here, uh, which is horizontal, is equal to 15.4 uh, meter per second. Now, the question is, how high is the track, the total height, okay? Well, from there, I can find, uh, I can, excuse me, I can use the total, uh, the conservation of energy. I can start from here. It says slide starting from rest, which means, uh, that means the initial velocity is zero. That means only kinetic, uh, potential. So let me call that position one or position A, and this is position B right here, okay? So in this case, I'm going to have use conservation of energy. E, A, e sub A equals E sub B. Okay. So what's happening? Let me make a drawing of that very quickly. It's like that. This is actually a better drawing. Here's the track. It goes up this way. Here's the track, here's V sub X. So I want to know this height here. Okay, so this is position A and this is position B right here. So position A is basically uh, K plus U, but K is zero because he start, started from rest. So it's basically M, G, H. Position B, however, it has both kinetic energy and height. Remember the height is right here. 1.25. So it's going to be um, one half mv one half m v sub x squared plus m g. This height right here we called it. Uh, what did we call? We called it y. So we're going to call it y right here. And we already know what it is. And I'm done. So all I need to do now is just solve for h. So masses cancel out. A lot of times mass cancel out. So therefore h is equal to uh, Vx squared over 2g plus y. There we go. When I do the algebra, I'm going to box it. I'm going to plug in my numbers. So that's going to give me the height is equal to Vx. We got the Vx to be right there. So 15.4 squared divided by 2 times g, which is 9.8. Plus the height is 1.25, and then I can just calculate that <clears throat> uh, divided by 19.6 plus uh, 1.25. My final answer is 13.3. There we go. Okay. All right, one more. Okay, so this one is also for my notes. So imagine you have a Uh, something like a hemispherical ball. It looks something like that. Hemisphere.
okay? And of radius, the inner radius of it is uh, R, big R. And I have a uh, some block right here, okay? And the block slides, okay? So imagine that the block slides. So what, the, what it does, it goes down to the lowest point right here, and then it goes up before it, you know, returns back. So it slides down like this. It reaches the lowest point, you know, they say the, the, the South Pole point or whatever. But it goes up a little bit, up to somewhere here. Okay. So it says that um, this is position C. Uh, sorry. So it, it reaches a point of uh, uh, 2R over 3, the height here. Here is the ground right here. Oops, the ground should be right there. Okay. And, of course, the height here would be R, because it's a hemisphere. The question is, oh, the mass is 200 grams. Um, the initial velocity of the block, or whatever you call that thing, zero, okay? Uh, frictionless surface. And the radius of the hemisphere is 30 centimeter. And there are four questions. A, find the potential energy U at point B. I'm sorry, I should put, this is point A right here. Point B is the lowest point, bottom. And this is point C right here, okay? So find the potential energy at point B. Um, find the kinetic energy at point B. Uh, C, find the velocity at point B. And last, find the velocity at C, at point C, okay? Simple problem, I hope it is. It's not very bad. Actually kind of fun to work on. So let's begin with the first part. Um, so you, you always, when you use conservation of energy, you always comes, uh, you're comparing with two points, you know, two places. So we'll start with A because we know everything about it. We know that the, the, the height is R and R is known to us. And we know the initial velocity is zero at A. Okay. So we can say that E sub A is equal to E sub B. It makes sense, right? So E sub A is nothing but MGR, right? Uh, one half of V squared is gone, it's zero, because we said the velocity is zero here, okay? So just MGY, MGH, or MGR for this matter. And then the kinetic energy, excuse me, the, uh, the total energy here is one half MV sub B squared plus the potential, which is MG, well, what is R? Zero. There is nothing really because it's at the bottom right here. So this is mg zero. So that's zero, zero. Okay. So I don't even need to write it down. So basically that's what I have. And from there I can say, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, ahead of myself. So part A said, what is the potential at B? Well, the potential at B, U at B is zero, okay? Now, what is the kinetic? I'm sorry, this should be part B. I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Sorry about that. I hope this is, in, uh, this is understood. The potential at B, because there is no height, it got to be zero. Make sense? So I hope this is, uh, this is easy. Now, the kinetic at B, well, here it is. Uh, he didn't ask me for the velocity yet. So this is just the kinetic at B. It's equal to basically MGR. And mg, so m is 200 gram, which is 0.2, times uh, 9.8, times r, which is 0.3, right? 0.3 is right here, 30 centimeter. So there we go. I have the kinetic at b 
and the kinetic at B in this case would be, uh, let's just calculate that number, so that will be 0.3 times 9.8 times 0.2, answer 0.59 roughly, so K at B is 0.59 joule, there we go, okay, all right, uh, part C or sorry, part, yeah, yeah, part C, he said the velocity at B, right? That's what he's saying. So, well, I know that the kinetic energy is that, so this is equal to that. So I can just say that uh, one half MVB squared equals 0.59, and then you can find the velocity at, uh, at point B. I hope this is not difficult to do. Now, and then lastly, he said he wants to know the velocity at C right here. Okay, so how do we do it? Again, we can compare them to two positions. I'm going to compare a position A with position C. So let's go there. So EA equals position C. EA is just MGR. I already got this answer, right? It's right here. Is this number? MGR equals to what is going on at C? Well, I have one half m v sub c squared plus m g. The height. What is the height? Is two r over three. And the masses cancel out. See what I'm saying? And you solve for v sub c. So you have here uh, g r minus 3r over uh, 2 uh, sorry 2r over 3 uh, g equals to half vc squared multiply everything by 2 so you got to get 2gr minus 4r over 3g equals v sub c and all that under the square root and i'm sure you can solve this problem no problem okay easy enough okay Okay, um, another one. I have another couple of problems before I finish this lecture. Okay. So, suppose you have a... a um, a truck. A, uh, this is the bed of a truck. Here it is. There's a wheel. The truck is here, and then uh, you have a ramp. The truck is there's a like a loading dock, if you will, and there is a here is the the ramp like this, and the truck is loading a box. Here is the box. It's unloading a box. Hear me. I think it's unloading, isn't it? Yeah, it's unloading a box. Okay. The box is sliding on this track, on this ramp, and this ramp has a friction, okay, so it's a rough surface, it's not a frictionless surface. The length of the ramp is one meter. Okay, and then um, the box slides down, it reaches here, okay, and then it goes, it slides horizontally down here, here is the block again, the same box, and with, the, with friction as well, this is also a rough surface. This is, we're going to call X2, and the height of the ramp from here to here, or to the, in, to the initial position of the box right here, okay? Uh, maybe I should go like that, hold on. The initial position, oh, the height rather, 0.5 meters, like that, 
the mass of the box, three kilogram. The ramp is one meter, we said. So the ramp, one meter in length. And the friction force, F, is equal to five Newton, okay? And the question is, so with this picture in mind, the question is, uh, find, there are two questions here, pay A, it said find velocity at the bottom of the ramp, find velocity, of the box that is, at bottom of the ramp. Okay, and part B, how far does it slide does the box slide how far uh, does the box slide on horizontal floor okay so those are two of the questions um it's kind of a cool problem it's not terribly trivial there is some thoughts involved here. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that the angle of the ramp here is 30 degrees. Okay. There we are. Again, we want to use <clears throat> conservation of energy to do that. So how do we do it? Again, you look for, so he's asking for the velocity here. Okay, so we want to know the velocity of the box right there. Here is the velocity. Maybe I should put a different color so you can see what's going on. I'll put a blue. You like blue? So here is the velocity. We want to get this velocity. Um, that's what to see the find the velocity, which is basically means this one. All right. So what I want to do, I want to use conservation of energy, and I want my my position is going to be this position here and this position here the, en the energy is conserved so i'm gonna uh you know equate them together so what do we got here at the uh, upper at the top so we have here uh since the the i forgot maybe to mention that the initial velocity of the of the block of the block of the box sorry is equal to zero okay so in this case the Kinetic energy, uh, the, the kinetic energy is equal to zero, so I'm really just have one m g h, where h is this one. Okay, I'll come back to the numbers later. Now equals to what's going on? Well, think about it. See if if the block was, sorry, if the if the ramp was frictionless. What that means is that it's going to slide very smoothly and it's going to come down here fast. But because there is friction, it's not going to come here as fast. Do you agree with me on that? In other words, some of that energy, the potential energy here, the MGH, has been expended or lost to the friction. Make sense? So I have to uh, take this into consideration. Well, that friction is basically work done by the force of friction. Remember, we're talking about here force uh, energy here. So, because here is here is the block, and it's on its way. You know, at some instant of time, the block is moving in this direction. So there is a friction force on it, like that, and that friction force is doing frictional work, if you will. That frictional work is equal to F X x being the distance from here to here okay this is called frictional work we haven't talked about it because only few problems has that this is basically energy lost so we have to take this into consideration and include it in our energy equation a plus of course the energy the kinetic energy here all right, there is no height here, so therefore it's all kinetic energy. So let's do that. So basically what I have in here, MGH, at the other end right here, what's going on? Well, I have kinetic, one half M, 
v squared at the bottom, but we have to add the frictional work. Okay? M G H equals one half M V squared plus F X. And F is given to me, it's right here. All I need to do now, I'm done with the problem. All I need is just to solve for V. You're done. So when I solve for V, I'm gonna end up with two over M M G H minus F X. All of that under the square root. And then you plug in the numbers. So I have here 2 over the mass of the box, which is uh, 3 kilograms right there, times 3, 9.8, times the height, 0.5, minus 5 for the friction, times 1 meter, all of that to the uh, power of uh, square root, basically, to the power of 1 half. And when you work it out, you will get... 2.54 meter per second and there we go so in other words the block is going to arrive or the box is going to arrive at the bottom here with this speed now as it is sliding down there is still that friction force on it that is a friction force on it right there so we have to also uh, take it into consideration how do we do it he says how far well let's let's read the problem again how far the box slides on the horizontal floor. In other words, it's going to keep sliding until it stops. Make sense? What caused it to stop? What caused it to stop? Think about this question. The friction. In other words, when it comes down here, the, the energy that it has here, it's all kinetic. We have calculated it. Okay? This, this part. It's all kinetic. That kinetic eventually lost to the friction force because eventually the box stopped somewhere down here. So the kinetic energy that the box had here, all of it has been expended to frictional work Fx. But we have a new x, this x, not this x. Okay, this is x, x2. So basically, one way to think about it is that um, box stops uh, all kinetic energy used as frictional work W sub F equal F X times 1. This one. Like X2, sorry. Like that. Okay, so now, we're, so basically we're starting with uh, one half mv squared at the bottom, right here, and this v is basically the one I just calculated right here. All of that has been expended or lost for to uh, friction, so fx sub 2. And how far? Well, just to solve for x sub 2. So that's going to be mv squared over 2f and then we can just plug it in there so that's gonna uh, so if I plug it in I will end up with a 1.94 meters I hope this is clear now there is another method you can do it let me show it very quickly and that is using kinematics. Look, when the box is here, we know what the initial velocity of the box here. Well, we just calculate 2.4 is right here. So as it is sliding down horizontally, it's decelerating. Remember, when we think of kinematics, we think of a you know, kinematical variable like acceleration. It's decelerating until it stopped. So the final velocity is zero. All I need to do is to find the rate of deceleration. How do I do that? Well, let's draw a picture. Here is the box. It started here, right? With initial velocity V naught equals 2.54. That's the one we calculated right here, guys, right? Right here. 
and now it's sliding down, decelerating, until it stopped here. It stopped. So this V is zero. So during its, its journey, so here is some arbitrary distance here, some at, at some arbitrary distance, we have a friction force. So we have here F sum of the forces equals MA, and the only force we have is the friction force right there. And we did this problem before. So the friction, I'm going to ignore the minus sign, it's not important. MA, that's the friction force, and what is a here well uh i can use kinematics between here and here remember this is the distance x sub two so here i, I can use can I, let me i'll come back to this to this formula in a minute and remember i have the friction and i have the the mass i can find a the friction is five and the mass is three i can find the acceleration no big deal but I want to use kinematics here. Well, the kinematics I'm going to use is the second one because I don't have time. So it's going to be V squared, the time T that is, V naught squared uh, plus 2AX2. Okay. The final velocity is zero. The initial is uh, 2.54. So I can solve for X2 and that's going to be negative V naught squared over 2A. But A is equal to what is this? So when I work it out, I end up with, if I, so this A here is F over M, plug it back in there, so therefore X2 is equal to minus V naught squared over 2F divided by M, I can put it right here, and there we go, here is the distance, the minus sign again is not important, but guess what, we get exactly the same expression right there, MV squared over 2F, MV squared over 2F, see that? Isn't that cool? So here we use, this one is much simpler, as you can see, just one one step, that's it. Here you have to use, you know, it's a little bit more primitive, but basically we end up with the same expression, okay? And then we work it out and get whatever answer we get, okay? Okay. Um, one last problem, and I will finish this uh, lecture. <clears throat> this one is kind of tough as well. All right, so what I have in here, think of it like a table. Here's a, uh, uh, say, a wall, and then you have a table like that. We've done something like this. I have a spring, okay, and I have a block, and then I have a pulley right here, and I have a, a cable that runs over the pulley, and then I have a mass here. I'm going to call it mass 2. This is mass 1. This is the spring with stiffness constant K and okay, so what's happening here is that M2 is uh, heavier than M1, okay? And so it's going to come down. It's going to pull the whole system down with a height h, okay? So you're seeing the, so you're going to go like this. The whole system will go this way. Got it? So it's going to move the, the M, M, uh, M1 will move to the right, to the right, yes. And M2 uh, will move down. You got that? You see the motion here? So, uh, so here we have a displacement x like that. And that is friction, okay? This is the surface right here on the table, there is actually a friction. So the friction here, mu, initial velocity of the whole system is zero. M2, here's the statement, M2 falls uh, height h and stops. Okay? 
we want to know what is the value of mu okay so how do we solve such a problem we're not given any numbers so we're just going to come up with an expression for it all right so we've done problems like these before if you remember and the uh, you know we used to break up the system you know break the system apart and do that we can do that if you want to but again um what i want to do is um use conservation of energy to solve this problem now here is how i'm going to do it imagine that initially i am i ho i have my hand underneath m2 and i'm just holding it in place uh imagine that i'm holding it in a place let's say this is initially like this here is the height it didn't go this height yet okay because my hand is resting on it and i'm pushing it up then i'll let go so what's going to happen going to go it's going to go down all the way here you see what i'm saying when i let go okay before i let go while i'm holding it on the bottom here before i let go i ask the question what is the total energy of the system well i can see that the spring here is not stretched it's not stretched yet it's relaxed okay um there is uh the there is no uh, frictional work happens here because the block one is just sitting there okay it didn't slide yet because remember frictional work will cause the energy to be lost to friction so none of that is happening also the there is no gain in height for m2 so this is a uh, sorry loss in height for m2 none of that is happening so the question is while i'm holding it underneath my hand here i'm holding it here what is the total energy of the system the total energy of the system really is just the potential energy m2 at height h that's it because the spring is relaxed this one hasn't moved yet the, the one that is causing the motion really is m2 falling that's it okay so let me just make a comment here m2 is causing the whole motion i hope you believe that by falling h height h that's what's going on so if i want to use uh, the total energy here so initially what do I have I have the potential energy mgh while I'm holding it under you know I have my hand underneath it then I let go this potential has been transferred into what well it's stretching the spring and it's moving the block with the friction so what's happening here is move the block so we have here one half kx squared this is the potential energy of the spring okay plus some of the energy went into friction work friction frictional work and there we go that's what we have okay so what's the next step well remember i need to find mu here so let's break the system apart let me start with m1 m1 here here it is what are the forces on it well we have a tension in the cord i've done we've done this problem before so i hope you understand all that here's the normal here's the m1g and then i have the i have two forces here i have the friction force and i have the kx from the spring so i have all of that right uh, this gives me that um, the tension T here minus Kx minus F equals, I mean, at the end of it, it's going to be zero. The whole thing stopped here, but it's MA while the system is moving so to say now if i take block two so 
So I have a tension T, and then here I have M to G, and the system is moving downward. So that's going to be T minus M to G equals minus M. Uh, this is M1 here, sorry. This is M to A. There we are. So these are the EOMs, the equation of motion. I hope this stuff is not difficult for you. We've done several problems like these. So we have that. Okay. All right. Okay. You agree with me that uh, this height H right here is equal to the distance X. So whatever the block moves, this is height. So FX here, this X really is just a height. I hope you understand that. You'll believe that. So let me go back to my energy equation now. So I have here uh, MGA, M2GH equals one half K. This is X squared, which is again is also H. So that's going to be one half K H squared plus FH. Okay. So what is H here? Uh, excuse me, what is F here? Well, we know that the friction force is equal to mu N. But N is equal to M1G, so that's going to be N, uh, mu M1G. And there we go. So we have the friction force is this one. I can put it back in there. And so I have here M2GH equals 1 half K H squared uh, plus mu M1GH. And I'm almost done with the problem. All I need to do now is to solve for mu. And as you can see, I really don't need those equations of motion. I really don't need them. I put them there, but I really don't need them. Okay. So we can solve for mu in this case, and that will be equal to M2GH minus one half K H squared over M1 gh and that's about it we can do some algebra you know to reduce the h's here there's an h here and one here and one here so the final version of it would be something like m 2 g minus one half kh over m1 g and there we go we have that okay okay i think um that should be good enough i mean uh I can go on another two hours of uh, there's so many problems out there, but I hope this is good enough. Okay, bye-bye.